Okay, so in this video what we're going to do is once again we're going to use uh, some helpers to help us find the zeros of the function. We get to a point where we can't really factor something um, then we can use other things to help us find the zeros and in this number 20 you're asked to use the rational root theorem to list all the possible rational roots for each equation and then find those roots. So let's let's start with that. The rational root theorem says to take the factors of the constant which are 6 and create combinations of numbers from the factors of the leading coefficient which is 1. So if we break that 6 into all of its factors we're going to get uh, plus and minus 1 2, 3, and 6. And all the factors of 1 are just simply plus and minus 1. And that makes it a little bit easier. So our list consists of 8 numbers all together. And they are plus and minus 1, 2, 3, and 6. What this simply means is if these numbers don't work then there's no point in looking for any other rational zeros. So to find out whether or not they work, so to speak, is we're going to again use synthetic division and we're going to test these values. These We have to do all eight of them and, and the sad thing is is that we might get through all eight and not find a single one. So um, Again, you're wanting the remainder to be zero because if the remainder is zero, you have found a factor. That's the um, factor theorem. So let's start with, let's just start in the middle of the list. I like to do that. So I'm going to start with the three. And uh, I'm going to drop down the one. And one times three is three. That gives me nine. And ladies and gentlemen, that gives me 27. I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to get a zero out of that because there's no negatives up here. So what I'm going to do is scratch that one off the list and start with a different number on the list. So I have the nice thing of this backup which allows me to not have to do a lot of erasing but if you've got pencil you've got to just erase all these. Um, I'm going to try a six and see if the 6 works. If I drop down the 1, actually I'm going to try a negative 6 because somehow we've got to have some negatives in here to get these numbers down as low what they need to be. Negative 1 times 6 is a negative 6. See how that brought that down to a 0? And negative 6 times 0 is 0. And that gave me, add those together, I get a 1. And negative 6, up, uh, there it is. Yep, there's the jackpot, 0. Since I have this zero here, that gives me that means it's a factor. So one of my zeros here, where it crosses over the x-axis, is at negative six. Now you can continue striking numbers off your list and testing those zeros, or you can put the variables back into this row. Remember, if this starts with a three, then this variable starts with a two. The degree is two, and that's going to be one x squared plus 0x plus 1. Now the nice thing about this is if I'm solving for zeros, if I can factor it, I should. But you can see that this is, cannot be factored because we have this plus here. It's not the difference between two perfect squares. However, the linear term is missing, which when the linear term is missing, you can solve it like a linear equation, which means isolate the variable. So I'm going to pull that one over to the other side and take the square root of both sides and what I'm going to get is the square root of negative one. Now that negative is a marker for imaginary number so I'm going to go to the bank convert it and say give me an I and really that's it. Now let's just talk this through further. The degree of this equation was 3, which means I have three complex roots. I have found one of them through the list that was at x equals 6. 
my second one is x equals i, and my third one is x equals negative i. There's only one strike on the x-axis. It's at negative 6, and the other two will not strike the x-axis. And finally, number 22. All right, come on, let's use the remainder theorem, or excuse me, use synthetic division and the remainder theorem to find this. So you all know how to use synthetic division. Even if you don't know where to start, you do know how to use synthetic division. Try to get some points out of these. So just, again, strip the uh, equation of the variables and divide. Now this is where some people get messed up. This is not a factor. This is the value of x. x equals 3. It's not written as a factor. It's not written like x minus 3 or anything. So since it's not written like that, since x is already solved for, then you're going to put just that number over here. Drop down your negative 1 and begin the process of synthetic division. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Add those together, you get 1. 3 times 1 is, once again, a 3. Add those together, you get negative 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Add those together, you get negative 8. Now, we've got to interpret this answer because we've just used synthetic division. Then it says, and the remainder theorem. Well, common sense will tell you that the remainder is negative 8. So don't put the variables back in there. It's pointless. All they're wanting us to give us is the remainder. The answer is the remainder. So there you go, negative 8. That's what you get when you plug the 3 in for each of these x's and evaluate the same exact answer you get as you use synthetic division. All right, that concludes this video, and um, hopefully we'll do OK on this test that's coming up.